and welcome to the Heathen Hearth channel. This is the show where we make recipes inspired by the historic and ethnographic imagination. This week, it's a hail and horn gathering recipe. We're making fish in the grave with fox piss sauce. Stay tuned. Great, I have three different kinds of fish here. I have this, which is Arctic char. Uh, Arctic char here. This is, what is this? This is uh, rainbow trout. And this one here is the um, Atlantic salmon. Now you notice there's uh, different colors, but they're all in an orange pink hue. And they're all fish of uh, the sort of the same family. And that's why I'm gonna try to do different types. Uh, usually, classically, the uh, Scandinavian version is made with uh, Atlantic salmon. Uh, however, being uh, uh, char is also something, though, that can be fished in Icelandic waters or more northern waters as well. And, of course, on, uh, on land, um, in the freshwater, you can find uh, rainbow trout. So I thought I would be uh, trying to cure uh, all three different types. And uh, first, though, I need to prepare the cure. And that is very simple. It's just three different uh, ingredients. And this is uh, fresh dill. And because uh, it's gonna be scraped off afterwards, I am going to just use the stems because they're not as pretty, but they have just as much flavor. So I'll cut them down. Actually, I think I might as well just use, I have two bunches of dill, so well, you, you want to be really dill heavy on this. Maybe I'll not do it all. We'll see. I've got three pieces, so I might have to make more, more of this cure uh, afterwards, because I'm not exactly sure how much it'll, uh, it'll take. Okay, so we have a lot of dill there. Now, the salt and the proportions of salt and uh, a sweetener are about half and half. The uh, modern recipe uh, uses um, uses sugar. However, in this recipe, to make it uh, something that might have been consumed in uh, pre-Christian. Scandinavia, we've, uh, we're going to be using honey. That uh, There's no proof uh, or evidence that they cured fish like this uh, in, that, in that time period, but it's very likely um, that they used some sort of curing process like this because there was a lot of dried cured fish in Scandinavia, obviously, but this is a fatty fish and this is almost not really like a long-term cure. It's just to keep it uh, fresh a little while longer. In many ways, this is almost like a cooking method and, and a method of keeping it uh, a bit, uh, keeping, a, keeping fish a bit longer than uh, you normally would be able to keep it. But not for like an entire season or something like that. All right, so there. And that'll probably take about this much honey. Now the honey here, where is this from again? I think this is from Kingston. Yeah, Kingston, Ontario. So this is uh, fairly local. The, uh, the cure, uh, well, since we're doing it in the fridge, there isn't that much fermentation really that, that happens. Um, you can do it if you want to do it at room temperature, but that's a bit more uh, iffy. It's a lot easier to do it in the fridge. Uh, what it does is it actually remove the, the sugar uh, and the salt uh, removes the liquid from the uh, from the salmon in many ways and um, and then it dries it out but at the same time impregnates the, uh, the salmon with the uh, with the uh, with a sweet and salty flavor but because the dills in there the dill aromatics get drawn into the fish 
uh, with the uh, salt during the cure. So uh, it's, a, it's a more effective way of uh, doing a marinade. Yeah. Should have gotten a longer spoon, I think. What a spatula. That's the right tool for the job. Well, maybe not when it's crystallized. clean this up and we'll get to the next stage. So it's called fish in the grave uh, because it's buried obviously. Now um, we, uh, we don't want to bury it any longer because uh, that's obviously not that hygienic. In fact botulism spores are very common in the ground and if you have an anaerobic environment they can grow and you can get uh, poisoned by the botulism toxins. So it's a lot safer to do in the fridge and you want to make things to keep things as clean as possible. This is our setup. So it's going to be a tray. And then this is a, just a, um, this here is just a, a, just a riser. And then I'm going to put this, that way it'll be on an angle. Then we'll wrap up our fish, put it onto this, uh, this tray, uh, wrap them with cling film, put another cutting board on top with a weight that way. The, uh, the cure, when it takes the liquid out of it, it'll drain into this tray <clears throat> and we can pour it off. A lot of recipes have, the, have, the, have you baste it or turn it over, but the, our goal is to get this as dry as possible um, over one day. Uh, usually you can do two day cures. Um, it, uh, it turns out better that way, but my uh, brunch is tomorrow. And so what we're going to try to do is get this as dry as possible within that time period. And that'll just be a faster cure. All right, so let's get to it. So I'll get my cling film out here. One of the things to remember is when you're wrapping it is to leave it open at one side so the liquid can uh, come out. So this will be the back side. So with the skin, so since the and not as much penetrates the skin, I won't use as much there. All right, so let's get the beautiful piece of char. Oh, look at that. Looks great. Get a nice, good coating, covering. All right, so I think I'll put this uh, um, the draining side. much cure left yeah definitely looks like I'm going to need to make some more so uh, 
I'll come back, uh, do that off camera, and then I'll come back on camera and I'll show you what the whole setup looks like. And here we go into the backup fridge. All right, there's space there. Now let's see, what can I make to press this down? Maybe if I wedge something in there. Ah, that works. I'll wedge some gochujang paste. Press it. I think that's probably pressed fairly well. There we go. Now to wait 12 to 48 hours. The salmon has been in the fridge overnight, so it's only been about uh, 12 hours. I would have loved to have done this for 48 hours because then you get a really um, firm salmon, but it also becomes a lot saltier. So uh, we'll try it now. You can see this is the salmon. It's gotten a lot thinner. This is going to be a messy operation, by the way. So uh, <coughs> it's, you have to scrape off all of the, uh, the cure that's on the outside. The best way to do it is after you scrape off the cure is to um, then um, leave it out in the air so that it forms what's called a pellicule which is like a skin on the outside and that provides the best texture oh this is really nice and firm excellent this is actually because i use so much salt it gets a firmer texture it almost like it's almost cooks i feel like it's almost cooked and this is exactly what i was going for I put this aside for a minute because I'm going to rinse these off and then dry them again. So that's the salmon. Let's see what's, uh, what's the next one here. I also have, I think, is this the trout? Oh, oh no. see way firmer This is the chart. Okay, so that's the trout then. I recognize this as the char because uh, it had a bit of a few holes in it for me taking out the pin bones. Not sure if I showed you that, but uh, when you've got fish of this kind, what you do is you run your hand uh, across the fish 
and uh, you can feel where these little pin bones are and then you take a set of pliers and you just pull them out that way they're not going to be uh, mucking things up when you're eating it raw because uh, they, it's sometimes okay when you cook the fish uh, to have those little tiny bones in there because they soften up but uh, when you're eating it raw they stay rather hard so you want to get rid of those might be able to do one more. track dogs by putting this on the ground but hey all right so I guess I'll use this board to cut onto looks pretty good I think I'll practice with the one that's least expensive which would be the salmon okay so the grain runs like that so I want to cut towards the tail this way from the tail I should say and so this I like mine more this texture it's much more of a texture almost like jerky I my imagination says that uh, or my guess is that in ancient times they would have wanted to keep, keep use this as a preserving method so it would have been more likely to have been saltier as well as more heavily cured the farther back in time you went. And I'm not the best at this, so usually, you know, you make really nice slices, but I'm making <laughs> quite a sort of messy pile. But I'm doing a pretty good job of getting it thin. Because it's so salty, you want to have it quite thin. It has a lot of flavor in it. The, uh, the stuff that uh, most modern recipes aren't as salty, and they, um, as a result, they usually cut them thicker, a bit more like sashimi. But I found that uh, with this method, uh, my method of doing it, you need to cut it a bit thinner for serving. Another way 
way to serve this is also just to leave it out at the table so that people can cut their own off. But uh, since we're having a bunch of people over, uh, rather than just a, a few, I think it's uh, easier if I prepare it first. It's a lot of fun to, to cut it like this. It's almost like making fish into some sort of, a, like, you know, carving the turkey at the table or some sort of fancy event. So here near the end, it's not cured as much because it's thicker, so I can cut it into thicker pieces here. And the final amount, I think I'll just do like this. There we go. And maybe cut them in half. There we have it. Filet. scraps there. All right, that one's done. So that's salmon. Keep salmon there all together. Okay, next we have char. was much more orange and it stayed much more orange. making fish jerky uh, this type of fish is, this type of fish is uh, too fatty for that uh, same thing with air-dried fish it doesn't work as well with the really fatty fish they often have to be cured or pickled or something like that it's because the fat goes rancid So the accompaniments for this <clears throat> as a sandwich, you can put it on, um, I like putting it on uh, rye bread. You can put it on, uh, it's exceptionally good open face. The classic in uh, uh, North America, of course, brought by uh, Jewish immigrants uh, from uh, Germany uh, was uh, cured salmon on uh, bagels. So bagels and lox. But uh, so the, I'm going to be serving it uh, today on uh, Danish rye bread, as well as uh, on various kinds of bagels. I think they're Montreal style. Being a Canadian, that's my style of bagel. And uh, usually there's a cream cheese in North America, but uh, it can be served any, uh, any sort of way, um, either on itself on a plate or whatever in, uh, in Scandinavia. Uh, often with a, a mustard sauce, which I uh, <coughs> I show you here in this video. The uh, what I'm planning on doing instead of cream cheese, though, is is using a mix of cream cheese and uh, goat cheese because uh, goat cheese is just fabulous. So the uh, here it is. I just mashed it together with a fork. <clears throat> Another topping uh, common is uh, a pickled. Uh, is a uh, sort of what, they're not pickled carnation buds. I can't remember what they're bud from like Sicily, or southern uh, uh, southern areas of Europe. But uh, it's capers. Capers are co quite common. Uh, I prefer actually uh, little bits of lemon, uh, especially the rind, fresh rind. But uh, red onions as well. The red onions are excellent on top of uh, on on a sandwich with this. And so those will be the the accoutrements that people can use uh, to create their own sandwiches today. And 
as curing goes, it's a lot easier to cure fish than it is to make your own sausages or something out of another meat, and a lot safer. Just remember to buy a pre-frozen uh, fish that has been frozen before, or so they call it sushi grade. That way there's uh, no uh, pathogens in it. All right, here's the salmon. No, this trout. Yeah, trout. Whoa, that is super red. Wow, cool. That got much darker in color. have a really sharp knife for this. Thank you very much, Tim. Winter Owl for my, uh, for the sharp knife. Wow, this one's a lot, has a much thicker, so this texture is very different in this part of the fish. I don't think it was pressed as much either because it wasn't, uh, didn't have the other uh, meat slice on it. I should say fish. I guess fish is a meat. Now, often when I'm cooking and we don't eat the, we don't have the skin for some reason, uh, the dogs get it. But uh, I'm not going to give the dogs the skin because I think it has way too much uh, salt in it for them. You notice how restrained I've been? I haven't even tried it yet. It's because I want to try it as a full thing all together with everybody else. I don't think I've ever been this restrained with the cured fish before. All right, that is done. Put that aside and we're ready to make sandwiches. It's gonna be so delicious. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Again, we have the char, which is very orange. We have the trout and the Atlantic salmon. Mm. So this sauce is just a, uh, it's just a sweet sauce with uh, dill and mustard. And um, I can't remember where I actually read that it was uh, called fox piss sauce, but that, uh, I was trying to look it up. I might have actually gotten that wrong. I have no idea, but it's a fun name nonetheless. Um, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of vinegar to give it that uh, sour taste that I like. So that it has that sweet and sour and uh, savory flavor. Now, I'm making it tonight uh, beforehand because the flavors uh, need to marry uh, overnight. So that it'll taste better. Now I'm doing two different versions, one vegan and one not vegan. Uh, so one will have uh, honey, but one will not. I'm also going to use a more uh, Northern European style vinegar in one, the apple cider vinegar and uh, uh, so the uh, white wine vinegar in, uh, in another. So you have two different flavors as well. I guess 
myself a grind of salt in each of those. This is a Keen's dried mustard. I really like the flavor of this stuff. Got two, I don't know, two teaspoons or so. These are the Indian style red mustard. So I call it rye. I like the seeds because they're smaller. This has a different flavor. And I guess we'll do the let's do the big one as the more ancient sort of style. Just a tiny splash of vinegar. And white wine vinegar in the other. Okay, and this one's the vegan one, so it'll have sugar. And this is not the vegan one, so it'll have honey. sugar. Typically this sauce is made with uh, oil so it's essentially a dr salad dressing but I'm gonna make mine with uh, water to make it uh, lighter. I might add some uh, some oil to it, anyways. This one, the honey one, though, I think I'm not going to add any oil to. The other one, I'll add honey uh, oil since I'm using Southern European ingredients, anyways. I might as well use this nice Spanish olive oil, so use olive oil as well. Uh, tomorrow but I'll keep it like this with the olive oil floating on top that way it'll uh, preserve it and both of these will get clean film on the top and go in the fridge so I gotta remember the vegan one is the smaller container the smaller boat Although I'm making this vegan, I think uh, I think the people who are coming are vegetarian, so I don't think they're going to care. All right, there we go. All right, so um, since we're here at uh, for our brunch, this is our Remembrance Day brunch. We have obviously for Hale and Horn um, and the Heathen Hearth channel. We're doing some stuff, but I'd like everybody to raise their glass and uh, because we're this weekend we honor the departed. <laughs> We have friends and family who were in wars, and they've done a lot for us, so um, hail to all of them. Hail, hail! Can the story it's again? so nice, though. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Really well done. We lost to a koi fish. Yeah. I can't believe you lost really? to a koi fish. That a koi fish that was this big. Absolutely. Really? Shit. Yeah, no, and there were some beautiful, wonderful pieces, but... Uh, what? Well, for whatever because reason, it's that political. was the thing. It's a political yeah. thing. Oh, Okay, so uh, it looks like you have all three. So you have uh, the, yes. that darkest one on rye bread is your ch is your uh, looks like your char. All so right. try that. Let's try the char. Should be fairly salty. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't really call it that salty. No, okay. I mean it's it's it's. I mean it's obviously in there, but. Because that's, that's probably from the end of the fish where it was thinner, so it's going to be the saltier part. 
Uh, you have some of the other ones that look like they're from the thicker part of the fish. It'll be less salty. No, no. salt isn't salt isn't overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Great fish taste. Can you get the dill off of that one, even though there's no extra dill added? Uh, <laughs> do I find dill? Yes. Yes, I do. All yes, right. Do. Mild dill flavor. Mild <laughs> dill flavor. <laughs> Check. <laughs> All right. Great. Mm. Salmon with onion and caper. A classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's caper over so I get the first bite. Yeah. Not the easiest thing to eat. How's your beard working as a salmon catcher, Brendan? Apparently <laughs> quite well. Oh uh, yeah, I, that's why I have mine, so I don't waste any salmon. Sustainably <laughs> harvested beard salmon. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit of dill in the onion tonight. Okay, good, yeah. I like red onion the best. It's the classic to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very delicious, and what else, what, it's a bagel. Uh, just I think it's a usual, I think it's an everything bagel. Okay. Um, Ace Bakery Montreal style. Very delicious all the way around. Excellent. Oh yeah, the cheese underneath it's a mixture of goat cheese and uh, cream cheese, so mm. it's got a bit of a tang. Yeah, creamy goat cheese. Why no one give Axel salmon? Axel just a little dog. Axel wants salmon. Dog loves salmon. I sit here.